Yeah, in, in 2003, I had been reassigned to work in Batambang to work with Bishop TK and I had expected a long-term mission there. But suddenly at the end of 2004, I got a letter from my provincial asking me if I was ready to go to Afghanistan. Just with Conference of South Asia, having known of my past experience with Cambodian refugees from 1980, then 88, 89, and then the entry into Cambodia in 1990, had thought that I would be the right person to accompany Father Santiago, who was the former provincial of Andhra Pradesh. And I was challenged to accept. I felt it a great challenge to accept this mission. One day, since the CRS had given us uh, transport and this interpreter, we were going along a certain road and I saw this sign on the, on the roadside and a small building inside and the sign read Herat Technical Vocational High School. Now I am connected with technical education in India, so immediately I told the, the interpreter that I wanted to go inside to see and to meet the director. Because uh, the provincial of South Asia had told us, go see what has to be done, let us know and then we will decide. So then uh, he took me in and I went into the small miserable building. It had just four small rooms. In the first room was the director, Mr. Karimi, and uh, next to him was his accountant. It was such a small room. Opposite uh, his room was the room for the staff. It had one table, a cupboard, and seven technical books. In the third room was a room for practicals. This was a technical high school meant to take in students in class 10, class 10 till class 12. And this was the first year it had just been founded. When I went into that uh, room for practicals, they had just had one table and nothing. There were no tools and no instruments. And in the fourth room, there were 24 girls studying English. That was the English period at that time. There was no room for the boys. So the boys were in the mosque next door. There were 43 boys. So this technical school had 24 girls and 43 boys. And it was really in a miserable state. Having noticed that there were 24 girls studying in that school, and I said to myself, we have to respect the parents of these girls who educated them. Spoke with Mr. Karimi about this step. The first thing he told me was, Mr. Oliver, please don't give me money. Money is bad. So I said, yeah, well, what should I do? He said, please come with me. I will take you to the shop. I will do all the bargaining for you and you pay the bills and you take the receipts and go back. And that we did. We bought a lot of instruments and I bought about 60 books to put in the library for the students. And then that was the first step that I took. He told me, are you sure you want to think of the second step? And I said, yeah. And then he took me in his car and took me to see this uh, about a kilometer away. The, the ministry was so happy with the first step and they said, okay, if he's willing to do something more, this is the building we offer you. It was another old building, but with 10 rooms and uh, with a lot of land around, much more than the, the first building. He said, uh, the important thing is you'll have to repair the whole building. It was in a miserable state and build a wall between this property and the government property. And then that's the second step. So immediately I wrote to the superiors and we took this further. We repaired the whole building. I converted two rooms into one laboratory. I bought a lot of equipment and uh, what that was needed, put all the furniture. And um, since we had started this building, the government decided to transfer the architecture division from another place into this building. So we were a school now for technical education, for electronics, electrical and architecture. 
I went to him and I said, Mr. Karimi, that was the second step. What about the third step? And then we took up, we started planning and talking with the, the teacher of the architecture division and the, uh, one of the contractors that we knew. And we planned a new building. And because the land, there was land, not very big land, but there was land enough. We put up a building with a, a basement, having a laboratory for electronics, having a bigger hall for technical drawing. On the first floor, we had three classrooms. On the second floor, another three classrooms. And on the third floor, we kept a big open space. We made it into a hall and with many bookshelves for a library, which we really filled up afterwards. What, was, uh, what really inspired me during these uh, two years that I was there was seeing the hope in the faces of these girls. We were able to, they could do all the practicals that they needed to do because with electronics, you know, they could uh, work at home also if needed. With architecture, they could go outside and uh, survey the fields, do the measurements and land measurement, etc. And I could even take them to the electrical installations to meet with the electrical engineers there. They could ask questions. It was very interesting for them and the boys also. They were also very happy with the practicals. Right from the beginning, Father Santiago, he was a very stern, not a stern, but a very uh, a person with a heart for the poor. And right from the beginning, he decided that we did not need to have a motorcycle or a car. And we were the only foreigners going about on bicycles. We bought bicycles and we used to go around. And the people welcomed us very much because they saw us not coming with guards and all that. The people I found to be really friendly. And I feel that uh, what I used to tell many people, you know, if the Afghans are truly your friend, they will protect you with their life. I believe that. My experience with Mr. Karimi, the way he was looking after the institute, and even all the staff, I, they were all getting a very low salary. I think at that time it was less than $50 a month. But they came with dedication to teach the students. Uh, later on, uh, once we built up the, the institute, their salary was in, increased by the government. So, but when we started, it was the personal commitment of these people that affected, that really moved me. I said, if they can do it, why can't I do something? Yeah. For me, I feel that uh, educating girls is about the most important what we should think as most important, because they are, the found, they are the backbone of the family. And I have had my own experience with my own parents, and uh, I'm coming from a big family of 11. We were five sisters and six brothers. But for my parents, the most important in the family were the girls. So right from that time, it was always to think of the girls, you know. And uh, we had a very large family, even my cousins and all, many girls and many boys. And I think the, the main thing is seeing also in the rural areas what it means to educate women. Because very often, even in Indian society, women are neglected. And that we have to change. <clears throat> and I felt that in Afghanistan, things were moving in a very positive direction. I only hope it doesn't get worse now. <laughs>